from Niagara Falls High School. I'm Stu Boyer along with Tom Prince, Russ Battaglia, our photographer, Heidi Gunther, our producer. And welcome to the final game of the annual Cataract Classic between the Bishop Kearney Kings out of Section 5 and Section 6's Niagara Falls Wolverines. And Tom, what a great matchup, at least on paper, this one appears to be. Two powerhouses. Oh, no doubt. And this is what, what Coach Bradbury has wanted all season, right? He was going to go out, take on the very best in Western New York, outside of Western New York, outside of New York State. It didn't matter. You and I have done so many games, too, where we say it is great when we see a coach challenge their players with the best competition. Coach Bradbury is doing exactly that and more, and this is just the beginning. It started last night where he went with Victor. Huge win right there as Niagara Falls goes 1-0 with the win over Victor last night. We're set to tip it off. Dave Smith, Will Tyler, and Don Neubauer, Neubauer are the officials. Trey Gale will jump it off with Jaden Capers. The Falls controls the opening tip and right to the basket goes Omario Rollins. And it's two to nothing falls. Ball's knocked away and a great save there. So now the ball will be brought up by the Kings out of Rochester, Bishop Kearney. Niagara Falls showing full court pressure here. It's inbounded to Russell Ellis. Little pitch and catch back and forth. Carney having a little bit of trouble with the press here as they try to bring the ball into the front court, and they do. Russell Ellis, the shot is off the iron. No good, taken by Gentile. The Falls gets the rebound. Now on the near side. This is Trey Gale, hands it off to Nick Estelle. He'll put up a running one-hander that's good, and it's four to nothing. Niagara Falls with an early lead, and let's see how Carney handles the press this time. Ja Reeves in the backcourt has it knocked away, and there's the first foul of the game on John Strong of the Falls. But Carney was having some problems with that press, and Tom, there are a couple of number changes here. Michael Taylor for the Falls is wearing 13, not 33. I was told that Mario uh, Rollins is a scratch. He's not playing today, so we'll have to figure out who that is as Carney comes into the front court driving down the lane. There's a foul, Alejandro Aguilar draws the foul. And very quickly, that's the second foul on the home team. So Aguilar goes to the free throw line for Carney in the dark blue uniforms with the light blue numbers and trim. Niagara Falls in the white, and he gets a good roll off the, off the back of the rim for the bucket. Niagara Falls with a, an early lead, and the Falls pressing on both possessions. And now here comes the Falls with the ball, and Carney will show a little bit of a press. Nick Estelle 
Brings the ball into the front court for the Wolverines. Estelle gets the ball back. Now to Gale. Gale into the corner. Gale gets it up. He'll put the three up. Around and in. Craig Gale makes it 7-2. to two. Now coming back the other way. And we have a traveling called against Russell Ellis. Number 10 is Ephraim Strong is who it is. Uh, I didn't catch that during the introductions. Thank you, Tom. So 7-2, to two, the falls with an early lead. And by the way, on Bishop Kearney, number three, Ja Reeves is the son of former Niagara University player James Reeves back in the days of Juan Mendez. Not too far from here, Niagara University. Estelle on the far side. Drives, kicks it out. Short jump shot off the iron, no good. Kearney grabs the rebound and they'll push it up the floor. Reeves with the ball in his hands. Drives down the lane, a running one-hander is no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll go off of Taylor for the falls. It'll stay with the Knights. Folks, we understand that the scoreboard right now is down, so we understand that. We are working to get that up real quickly. We'll give you right now verbally what the score is at the time in the game and the clock and everything. Carney with the ball, Gentile. Drives, stops, sends it back. Stolen, no foul there. Another bump, but again, no foul. Refs letting him play. He is off the mark. Loose ball, taken down by Gale for the uh, falls. Now on the far side to Stell. Banked up and in. And it's another bucket for Niagara Falls. They've opened a quick 9-2 lead. And once again, they'll put pressure on in the backcourt on, but this time... They'll break it, driving toward the bucket, laying it up, no good, but there's a foul. Aguilar driving down the, driving toward the bucket, he draws the foul. That's the third foul on Niagara Falls. As with just five minutes and 13 seconds left, the Falls is open, a nine to two lead. Aguilar at the free throw line. Coach Kevin Good calling the rest of his team together to having, having a little conversation with them. First free throw by Aguilar is good to make it nine to three. And Aguilar will get another free throw. That free throw is good to make it nine to four. And the Wolverines, Estelle, the ball in his hands. Far side to John Strong. Strong puts it on the floor, keeps the dribble. Now he'll hand it off to Taylor. Now near side, back to Estelle. Now Carney. Looks like they've switched to somewhat of a 2-3 zone, Tom. There's Gale with the bounce pass. Estelle stops, looks for Gale. Gale puts up the three off the back rim. No good, rebound by Strong. This is Ephraim Strong, drives, lays it up, around and out, no good. Rebound hauled down by Capers for Bishop Carney, and they're into the front court. Russell Ellis with the ball. Far side to Reeves. Reeves to Gentile, he'll stop. His shot is blocked, knocked out of bounds by Ephraim Strong, and it went off of the Carney player, so it'll be Niagara Falls ball. Nick Castell. Near side to Gale. Now Strong back to Gale. Stell one more time. Stell drives down the lane, running one hander, no good. Rebound taken down by Aguilar. Now Reeves for Carney. Back to Aguilar. Looks like Carney may have settled down a little bit here after a start that I'm sure they weren't thrilled with. Russell Ellis with the ball now, being guarded by John Strong. Younger brother of Ephraim Strong, Gentile. And driving, and there's another foul. Jaden Capers 
had the ball on the floor. He was fouled, and that's the fourth on Niagara Falls. Carney has no fouls so far. That may be the only negative thing you could say about Niagara Falls is to, at this point is they've got four fouls against them, and Carney's got zero, right? That is the biggest difference so far early in this game. I love the way the press has come out for Niagara Falls. I think that is the reason why they've come out to this early lead. They inbound it to Reeves. To Russell Ellis on the far side. It's a pick from Gentile. Gets the ball back to Gentile. He'll drive. His shot is blocked by Ephraim Strong. Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Kearney. That's at least the second block that he's had. Now we get Gary and Gilmore into the game for the Falls. As Gale goes out. And yes, that is the younger brother of Rodney Gale. Now at Ohio State. In fact, they may be playing right now, right? The two brothers could be playing at the same time. That would be awesome, <laughs> wouldn't it? Here's Reeves for Carney to Ellis. Ellis to Aguilar. His short jump shot off the iron. No good. John Strong comes down with a strong rebound. Driving toward the bucket. Putting it up and has it blocked. Is he from Strong? Clean block goes out of bounds off of Niagara Falls. It'll be Carney Ball. And here comes that press. Three minutes exactly left in the first quarter. Nine to four, Niagara Falls. Carney will inbound it to Ja Reeves. Back to Aguilar, now on the far side to Ellis. And Ellis will bring it into the front court. Cut off by Taylor. He'll drive right down the lane, put it up, no good. Rebound taken down by the Falls. Taken down by Taylor into the front court to Estelle. Estelle in the near corner. Strong, far side to Ephraim Strong. Spinning, jump shot is no good by John Strong. Carney comes away with the rebound. This is Reeves. He'll go right to the bucket, lay it up. No good. Ephraim Strong gets the rebound, and here comes Niagara Falls back the other way quickly. Ephraim Strong picks it back out. Shot is good by younger brother John Strong. A three-pointer, 12-4 to four, Niagara Falls. And Bishop Carney takes a timeout. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. 2-11 to play in the first quarter. You're watching high school basketball on the NFHS Network. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. So Niagara Falls off to a great start, leading 12 to 4. You got some information. The replay first. Uh oh, these replays are brought to you by Logistics Plus of Western New York. And there's the replay right there of that shot. Swish. Nice three, nice kick out too. So no, I was just gonna say, we brought up Roddy Gale, so let's give him a little love. He last played on Wednesday in the win over Skinny at 11 in that game. And he'll play tomorrow against Minnesota in a Big Ten matchup, five and two versus six and one Ohio State. So that'll be a big matchup tomorrow for Roddy Gale. Aguilar will inbound for Carney. Niagara Falls with the full court pressure coming once again. This is what I'd call a heavy press. They get it to Gentile. Now they'll drop back. Ephraim Strong guarding Gentile as he goes into the front court. And he will hand it off to Russell Ellis. Now he'll get it back into the corner to Reeves. Back to Aguilar. Aguilar. To Capers. Capers' shot is blocked, but there's a foul again, and that's the fifth on Niagara Falls. Yeah, and that's real early. Boy, we're only in, you know, the first quarter right here. There's a good chance that Carney could be at the line in that second quarter very quickly. So Capers goes to the free throw line for the Kings. And he'll make the first one and make it 12 to 5. And we're going to get a substitution. Kiel Walker for Niagara Falls takes the place of Nick Estelle. Capers looking to take that second free throw. 
And it is no good. Ephraim Strong comes down with the rebound. Strong into the front court quickly. He'll drive right toward the bucket and lay it up. No good. But this time he draws the foul. And the first foul, Carney has literally had called against him the entire first quarter. That'll put Ephraim Strong at the free throw line. Now we're going to get a substitution for Carney. Maddox Volpe set to check in for the Kings. Strong at the free throw line. That's off the back iron and no good. Volpe comes in. Capers goes out for the Kings. Strong that takes that second free throw. That one is no good. And coming down with the rebound was Volpe, who just came into the game. No full court pressure that time. The ball goes off the hands of Aguilar. He retains control and gets it to Reeves. Back to Ellis. Ellis into the corner, Aguilar for three, no good, off the iron, battle for the loose ball, controlled by Carney, and we got bodies flying, the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Kings. You know, we've already seen him come back on the full court press, you almost wonder in the second corner, are we gonna see him go to a zone, just because of the fouls, the difference in fouls right now, and try to make sure nobody gets into foul trouble. Carney inbounds to Volpe, and his layup goes almost in and then falls out. A little bit of bad luck there for Volpe as the ball wouldn't fall. Now Nick Estelle goes back into the game for the falls, and he'll take the place of Ephraim Strong. And now Ellis comes out for Carney. Jahan Wilson into the game for the Kings. Nick Estelle, once again, with the ball in his hands. Near side to Taylor. Taylor looking for a teammate, finds John Strong. He'll take the short jump shot, no good. Battle for the loose ball, and it rolls out. It is saved by Strong, nicely done there. Now John Strong has it one more time for the falls. To Estelle on the near side. Estelle puts it on the floor, spins, puts it up, no good. Battle for the rebound. Ja Reeves comes down with it for the Kings. Aguilar, cross-court pass to Wilson. Jahan Wilson back to Reeves. Less than 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Near side to Gentile. Gentile now on the far side. Maddox Volpe back to Aguilar. Goes off his foot. Diving on the floor. Great play by the Falls. Here goes Kier Walker now to Strong. Banks it up and in. Well done by the Falls. Great defense turns into offense. Ja Reeves gets it. Oh, he passed it to Volpe, but Volpe had turned the wrong way, and the ball goes out of bounds with 3.9 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Niagara Falls up 14 to five, looking to add perhaps a late one. Far side to John Strong. Long range three, off the backboard and the rim, and no good. So Niagara Falls with an outstanding first quarter. This first quarter has been brought to you by West Her New York. You are watching high school basketball, and we're gonna keep it right here at the Falls. We're gonna show that last play, that steal is what we're gonna show right here. So let's take a look at the replay. Great effort. Look at the effort on there. And that's actually Michael Taylor right there. It goes down to the floor, be able to get that play. And then you see what a great job as Strong's going to take this right to the hole, finish and up off the glass. What a great play right there. All started, like you said, defense turns into all led by Michael Taylor. Got to love that play right there. Replays are brought to you by Logistics Plus of Western New York. So an outstanding start for Niagara Falls. And the scoreboard clock, no fouls yet in the second quarter, but Niagara Falls had five in the first to one for Bishop Kearney. And Niagara Falls with that nine point lead. Let's give everybody a football update as St. Francis locally is playing for a state championship against Cardinal O'Hayes with 10.04 left in the third quarter. St. Francis is down 27-6 to Cardinal O'Hara. A tough day so far for the Red Raiders. Jerry Smith's team seemingly competes for that state championship almost every year. As of late, no doubt, right? It was probably more Canisius before then, but as late, no doubt, it's been St. Francis. 
This is the final game of the Cataract Classic. It's the annual season opening tournament here at Niagara Falls as now the high school basketball season is well underway. And Tom, you and I will be at Riverside Tuesday night for the Riverside Health Sciences game where they will- No, Buffalo Science. Buffalo Sciences, excuse me. Uh, where they will dedicate the court at Riverside to the great coach Bill Russell. So that'll be a fun night for us. As we get set to start the second quarter, Bishop Kearney will have the ball to start the quarter. Alejandro Aguilar will inbound, and he will get it to Jahan Wilson. And he's pressured in the backcourt by Nick Estelle, gets it back to Aguilar. It's a pick from Volpe. He'll put up the shot and score, and it's 14 to seven. So a much better start to the second quarter for Kearney than they had in the first quarter. Ephraim Strong now with the ball to Estelle on the far side. Estelle drives down the lane, puts it up, has his shot blocked by Volpe, but they're gonna call a foul on Maddox Volpe. That is the, just the first foul here of the second quarter, and that will put Estelle on the free throw line. Still, if you remember that the boys game used to be the fouls for the half, they change it to mimic what the girls game is, and it's the fouls every quarter now. So it's that five fouls is that magic number for the quarter right now is what the difference from the previous years to this year is. Interesting change. You know, the one change I'd really like to see them make in college basketball, the women two 20-minute halves. Yeah, of, that's I what agree. I'd, like I'd, I'd, I'd like to see the games be exactly the same. Me too. So now Niagara Falls continuing to put that full court pressure on. Ephraim Strong in the back court on Colin Gentile, who brings it into the front court. Gentile hands it off to Ellis. Kier Walker guarding him. Now it's Gentile. Back out to Ellis. He thought about a shot, decided against it. Drives on Walker. Running one-hander is around and in. Good bucket there. Nice play. 15 to 9. And now the gap is closed to six. Stell to Strong, Ephraim Strong. Michael Taylor, Strong. Gentile guarding Strong. Now on the far side to Walker. Oh, stolen! Great effort there. But unfortunately for Carney, Wilson couldn't quite get the ball. Great diving effort, but he couldn't. The ball went out of bounds and it will stay with the ball. Yeah, you can't ask for much. He completely laid out for that one. Gave up his body right there to try to make something happen for his team. Estelle will inbound it, almost stolen. Great effort by Wilson there, but the John Strong will maintain possession for the falls. He'll put it on the floor into the corner. Taylor for three, off the iron, no good. Great rebound there. Well done by Darian Gilmore. Whistle blows, and there's a foul called. I believe that's a foul on Carney. It's a non-shooting foul. And we're going to get a substitution here as Trey Gale comes back in. If I tell you, early on, I love John Strong's game. This is a sophomore right out there that's leading this Niagara Falls team. Just love right now his vision on the court. I love how he's moved without the ball in his hands. And within the ball, he's gotten great penetration into the paint and really finding open guys all over the court. He really has seen this game very well early on. So Nick Estelle set to inbound for the falls. Estelle, Ephraim Strong, he'll put it on the floor. His spin, he's cut off, but he passes it to Gilmore underneath. He kicks it out to John Strong. His shot is blocked and stolen by Bishop Kearney, and away goes Capers. Now the Falls defense catches up with them. They get it back to Ellis. He'll put up a three around and out. Volpe skies for the rebound. Foul underneath. That's going to go against Bishop Kearney. A push off. And it'll be Falls ball. And now Kayvon Agee comes in as Darian Gilmore goes out for the Wolverines. And they're letting them play out here. They really are. You can see there's a lot of contact. They are absolutely letting them play out there, which is what's equating to this very fast pace that we're seeing early on in this game. And there's another foul against Bishop Carney, Jahan Wilson, guarding Nick Estelle. He fouled him as they've got one man up top. Now here comes the second man. 
and someone from Niagara Falls, Coach Bradbury, saying somebody come back and help him out, and they do. It's John Strong, and he'll dribble it into the front court. John Strong. Now into the corner for Estelle for three off the iron. No good. Gale skies for that rebound. And they three the, and uh, Ephraim Strong drains the three-pointer to make it 18 to 9. Quick turnaround there for the falls. Ja Reeves now driving down the lane and a shot blocked by Kayvon Agee. Big block there. Well, that might have been strong on the it was Ephraim Strong on the block. Nice block there. And there's another foul, and this one will go against Niagara Falls. And that'll put Jahan Wilson at the free throw line. Big time block there. Stu Boyer and Tom Prince bringing you Bishop Kearney and Niagara Falls. First free throw is no good. Boy, I'll tell you, this gym echoes. <laughs> you can hear everything in this gym. So you could imagine right now if Niagara Falls has the year that they're expecting and this gym is packed and screaming with fans what it will really sound like. It will be loud and very difficult for opponent, opposing teams yep. to come in here. Second free throw is no good. AG gets the rebound. And he'll get it into the front court. The fast break for the Paul falls put up no good. Strong gets the rebound. Somehow had the ball knocked out of his hands, taken away by Reeves, and he'll bounce pass it ahead to Capers. His shot is up, no good. Rebound Niagara Falls by Estelle. Into the front court to Strong. That's John Strong. Now into the corner. Ephraim Strong for three. Off the iron, no good. Oh, what a play by Strong. He puts it up. It won't go, but John Strong is fouled. Boy, this game... They play at a fast pace, don't yeah. they? But I got to tell you, I really have liked what John Strong's game so far. This is a sophomore out here leading this team. You know, one of the leaders out here in this team. But he's been inside. He's been outside. He's been durable penetration. He has done just about every facet of the game early on in this one. And the first free throw is no good as Colin Gentile comes into the game for Bishop Kearney. Aguilar will go out. And Strong will get his second free throw. Carney by, or, um, Niagara Falls by nine. Second free throw is also no good. Ja Reeves gets the rebound, pushes it into the front court to Jahan Wilson. Back to Reeves. Now on the near side, Russell Ellis, Gentile, Wilson will drive down the lane. He's cut off. Gets it to Gentile, back out to Reeves. And Reeves will get it back on the give and go. He stops into the corner. Coming out of there is Russell Ellis. Ellis, Gentile, five seconds on the shot clock. Gentile drives down the lane, puts it up and in. Nice play there by Colin Gentile to make it 18-11. Now Nick Estelle into the front court for the Wolverines. Gets a pick from A.G. And he'll send it a... Somehow he got a shot away, tipped up in the air. Gale gets the rebound. John Strong now has it. Trying to spin away from the defender. Good defense there. Ephraim Strong with the ball. Strong drives to the basket, has his knocked out of his hands, and that's a foul against Bishop Kearney. And I think that's number five still. That, well, it's kind of the opposite of the first quarter, at least in it, terms of fouls. Literally the opposite. It was 5-1, wasn't it? Yeah. It's was exact, exactly the opposite. <laughs> Foul on Alejandro Aguilar, or Kuhneman, because he's sitting right here. <laughs> First free throw is good by Ephraim Strong. Aguilar goes back in. Capers comes out. Second free throw is no good. Battle for the loose ball and a tie-up. And Ronnie Gale involved in the tie-up. Excuse me, Trey Gale, excuse me. Ronnie's the big brother. <laughs> and, now, and now Trey will inbound it for the falls to A.G. Now in the corner, Gale for three. Off the iron, no good. 
Aguilar comes away with the ball. And Carney's into the front court quickly. Now on the far side, now into the corner. Comes out to Wilson. Now Aguilar, he'll take a three off the iron. No good. AG gets the rebound for Niagara Falls. Oh, nice play by Strong to get out of that double team. He was trapped in the backcourt, but he got out of it. Bounce pass to AG. Puts up the shot, but he gets hammered on the way up. And he'll go to the free throw line for two. So Kayvon AG at the free throw line for the Wolverines. AG, a sophomore, stands at 6'3". One of the tallest players on the Falls team. John Strong is 6'3", AG 6'3", and Darian Gilmore listed at 6'4". First free throw, no good. And unofficially, Tom, I'm going to take a while to guess that Mitch Bradbury's not going to be too thrilled with his team's free throw shooting today. They, they've missed a bunch. I think both teams are going to go in and they're going to really <laughs> talk about what they've got to fix, right? But at least Niagara Falls is going to say, hey, here's the positive, right? We probably haven't even played our best game and we're up by eight at this point. That's a really good point. Ja Reeves now into the front court to Aguilar. And he has the ball knocked out of his hands, taken away by the Falls. Estelle driving toward the bucket, puts it up. No good. Yes, it falls. He got a roll and a foul. Boy, that looked like it was going to roll out, then it rolled in. And he got the foul. We're going to take a Replays are brought to you by Logistics Plus of Western New York. See, I thought it wasn't going to go, and then it, then it, it rolled, rolled in. It rolled right in. You know what Coach Bradbury's going to talk positively about? This defense has been unbelievable today, and that really is what he's going to go in and talk positive about because this defense has been really what has kept them and led into offense. Estelle makes the free throw. Now Ephraim Strong putting on the backcourt pressure against Gentile. Gentile kicks it out to Reeves. Reeves will get it right back. Reeves driving. Sends it into the corner to Aguilar. Now Gentile for three, no good. Rebound Niagara Falls. Long pass up ahead, too far for Taylor. Not a bad idea on the fast break from Estelle, but the pass, I don't know if that slipped off his hands or not, but it wasn't the pass they wanted. And it'll be Car Carney Ball. And you can see, they're gonna go back to a full court press here too, Stu. They're ready, they're ready to make that defense really come down the last 256. They'll get it to Reeves, and then Niagara Falls will just drop back. Estelle guarding Reeves, crosses the timeline. Reeves to Gentile, off his hands, but he regains control. Gentile now Reeves one more time. Estelle guarding him, back to Ellis. Reeves. Now driving down the lane, and they'll get a three from the corner. No good. And Niagara Falls gets the rebound. Estelle into the front court. Estelle drives, and he's fouled as he's driving to the basket. And now the foul's on the Kearney side, getting up high. And it just means that they're going to they're gonna shoot two right here. They're going to shoot two the rest of the way for the last 218. So Nick Estelle on the free throw line for Niagara Falls. The Falls by 11. Carney has had a lot of trouble with, the, as you mentioned, the, the full court press in the Niagara Falls defense. And Estelle will hit the front of the rim on the free throw. And really, it's, it's just how aggressive they are. And you can see they've been in man-to-man -man the entire game. Even when they go into a full court press, they're man-to-man, -man, right? They really are just making sure that their defense is relentless. And Taylor is called for the foul as Estelle missed the second free throw. He followed, a fouled Aguilar. Not a shooting foul. So Gentile will inbound. I'll tell you, with how much they're full court pressing, you could just imagine what Coach Bradbury's practices are like, <laughs> yeah. right? Because you know they are running, running, and running the entire practice. And there's a steal by Niagara Falls. He knocked it away. And now Wilson, or Ellis, excuse me, is called for the foul. So Niagara Falls playing that great defense. And this will put Niagara Falls back on the free throw line. Yep, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's Estel who's going to go to the line. That's just great defense, and then Kearney 
tried to make something happen. It went the other way. Yeah, that was Strong who actually had that ball ticked out is what he did. You can see from behind, he hit the ball out, and that's where the steal came from. Colby Spate getting set to enter the game for Bishop Kearney. Nick Estelle at the free throw line. First free throw is good. Spate enters, he takes Russell Ellis' spot. Second free throw, also good. 24 to 11. Gentile. Aguilar in the backcourt. Strong guarding him. Cut off nicely by Gale. He finds the open man. It's Spate. Put up and in. For the Carney bucket by Reeves. Niagara falls quickly into the front court. The ball's knocked away from Strong. There's a foul called on Carney. Coach Good was not happy about that when he jumped up off the bench. And once again, Niagara Falls will be at the free throw line. So what a reversal, Tom. First quarter, the fouls on Niagara Falls. Second quarter, yeah. completely flipped. And even more in the favor of yeah. Niagara Falls, right? And it's really just been the way they've been pushing this pace, especially right towards the rim. John Strong at the free throw line. He hits the front rim and does not get the ball to roll. It looks like Carlos Bradbury has called the timeout. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. So the Army bringing you this timeout. We're going to take a timeout, too. You're watching high school basketball on Western New York Athletics. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Less than two minutes remaining here in the first half. Niagara Falls with a 24 to 13 lead. As Coach Bradbury from the Falls has just called the timeout. And Niagara Falls will be back at the free throw line here. Nick Estelle once again at the free throw line. Junior guard listed at five feet and 10 inches. And remember, that timeout was really to set up after the free throw is what that is, right? Especially if it's a missed free throw, what you're gonna do defensively right after that happens. Free throw is good. That was actually John Strong, not Nick Estelle. And a steal. And stolen back by Carney, and now Niagara Falls gets it. Shot up, no good. And Reeves comes down with it for Carney. The Falls. Defense wreaking havoc on Carney Gentile now into the front court. Bounce pass to Aguilar and a reverse layup is good. Nicely done, 25 to 10. Niagara Falls just pushing the pace. Ephraim Strong and his pass is stolen by Gentile, intended for Estelle. Gentile lays it up and in, 25-17. That's the best spurt of this game by Carney. As the Falls continues to push it, Nick Estelle into the front court. We'll hand it off to John Strong to trade Gale. Gale drives and the ball got knocked away from him, but it's saved by Taylor. Comes to John Strong, almost stolen. Now it is stolen. Pass up ahead to Jahan Wilson to lay it up and in. And suddenly it's a six point game at 25 to 19 as we're in the final 50 seconds. So the Kearney team getting some defense and turning it into offense. Into the front court. Ephraim Strong to Gale, Trey Gale, far side to Taylor. Now John Strong, he'll put it on the floor. Back to Estelle. Short jump shot, no good. Taylor tips it up in the air. There's a foul underneath. And I believe that's on Bishop Kearney. So once again, Niagara Falls will be at the free throw line. I'll tell you, Niagara Falls has got to be careful. Those real high looping passes or anything that goes clear across the court, these are two very athletic teams. They're going to make those steals. They're going to get those tips. That's one thing you can't do 
you got to be crisper, cleaner with those passes. Guys got to come to the ball. Well, that foul, foul was on Niagara Falls, not a shooting foul. Now we're in the final 20 seconds. Kearney has the ball. He can cut this to four or three. Aguilar to Reeves. Gentile in the corner. Coming up on 10 seconds. Wilson back to Gentile. His shot is no good. Rebound. Knocked out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Bishop Kearney with 1.7 seconds remaining in the half here. So the last few minutes, Kearney's asserted itself and gotten back into this game. Aguilar will inbound. To, to Reeves for three. Good! At the buzzer! And at halftime, Niagara Falls leads this one 25 to 22. Carney with a huge final three minutes of that second quarter. Really, you can't even say the final two minutes there. Because remember, they came out. It was right when that free throw, that timeout was called, that all this really happened. You know Coach Bradbury is going to focus on the last two minutes of what just happened out here. And that's really going to be the key to halftime for him. So it's a three-point game at halftime. Niagara Falls leading 25-22. The second quarter was brought to you by West Hearn, New York. After the game, Tom will be selecting his Western New York Media Care Player of the Game. We're going to take a break here at halftime and remind everybody that you are watching high school basketball on Western New York Athletics. Team West Her, together for the holidays. Open them up, boys. Mercedes? BMW. We thought the limit was 25 bucks. This one's mine, right? Seriously? Club covers? It's supposed to be all of us. They're handmade. And the best gift ever. I love it. Go oh, team West Her. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. We're back at Niagara Falls High School, 25-22. The Wolverines lead Bishop Kearney. We want to take a look at the replay of that final three-pointer by Kearney. Replays are brought to you by Logistics Plus of Western New York. Buzzer beater, and a great play by Kearney. He had to inbound it and shoot it, and he drained it at the buzzer. So suddenly, Tom, this game was had it in complete control. Now it's a three-point game. Yeah, and it's really been that last-minute 40. You've got to give credit right now to Bishop Carney. It was three steals right in a row, but it was because of long passes, high passes, stuff that you tell your team you don't want them to do, and they did it. And that's where the steals came in and went the upper way, and they went for easy buckets on the other end, if you remember, because they were steals, and then you had an outlet guy that was going on the, down the sidelines, and they were releasing right when that play happened, and you got them for easy buckets on the other end. So we're at halftime, Niagara Falls leading 25 to 22. Want to remind everybody once again that the third quarter will be brought to you by West Her, New York. We're going to take a break. Tom and I will be back with the second half. After this short break, you're watching High School Basketball on Western New York Athletics. Team West Her, together for the holidays. Open them up, boys. Mercedes? BMW. We thought the limit was 25 bucks. This one's mine, right? Seriously? Club covers? It's supposed to be all of us. They're handmade. And the best gift ever. I love it. Go oh, Team West Her. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. 
means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. 300 Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, Buttes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media, LLC. 300 Level Media can highlight your business by incorporating commercials, live reads, and corporate logos throughout our WNY Athletics events. WNY Athletics is the premier high school sports streaming service in New York State. Covering regular season contests through the state championships and everything in between with over a million views annually. You can find more information about advertising on any of our platforms at WNYAthletics.com slash become a sponsor. There is now a way to stay up to date on the latest scores across Western New York. You can find more information at WNYAthletics.com slash scoreboard for the latest across Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Association events. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Team West Her, together for the holidays. Open them up, boys. Mercedes? BMW. We thought the limit was 25 bucks. This one's mine, right? Seriously? Club covers? 
It's supposed to be all of us. They're handmade. And the best gift ever. I love it. Oh, be bless her. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. We don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media L. Welcome back to Niagara Falls High School. Bishop Kearney just now walking back out of the locker room. Want to remind everybody that the third quarter is brought to you by West Her of Western New York. At halftime, Niagara Falls with a 25-22 lead and an alarming statistic, Tom. Niagara Falls 6 for 17 from the free throw line in the first half. You know, it's funny, we were sitting here at halftime just talking, you and I, and said, if you're watching this game, you felt like Niagara Falls was easily up by 15 points. And that right there is one of the biggest reasons and the biggest stats is, you know, we says, free throws aren't always free, right? You've said that, that's your quote that I hear all the time you say, and that's proof in the pudding right there. Uh, so Carney will get the ball to start the second half. The teams have switched ends. Aguilar inbounds it, now it's Gentile on the near side. And back over to Reeves who takes a dribble and gets it back to Aguilar. Now Wilson, running one-hander, puts it way up, no good, but the whistle blows and right off the bat, there's a foul. Well, this crew of Dave Smith, yet is the, that is the Clarence baseball head coach, Dave Smith, Will Tyler, and Don Neubauer, they have been busy today. And that'll put Bishop Kearney at the free throw line in the person of Jahan Wilson. The last three games we've seen, Derek Hill, the head coach of uh, Hamburg, did the one game that we called for uh, Hilbert College. The game before this, Jeff Halbert called the game, uh, who is now the Iroquois head coach. And now you've got Dave Smith with Clarence. These baseball guys are all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Jahan Wilson missed the first free throw. Nick Estelle back along the stripe near the free throw line after getting a word from Coach Bradbury. Second free throw is good, and now we have a two-point game, and Carney will put some pressure on in the backcourt. Nick Estelle trapped deep in his own backcourt, looking for help, being guarded by Ellis. Now he gets it into the front court. He'll dump it off into the corner, the three-pointer way off by Gale, and Carney comes back the other way. Ja Reeves with the ball. To Wilson, near side to Gentile. Now Capers, the three-pointer is good by Ja Reeves. Oh, it rolled out. It rolled, rolled out, Stu. Out. Oh my goodness! I it went it was... in almost in and rolled right out. Wow! I thought for sure that was in. Strong to the basket, strong, and that one goes in, and he gets the foul. John Strong. So what a huge turn there! Carney thought they might have taken a lead. The ball rolls out, and the ball rolls to the other end. John Strong scores, and he's fouled. So, so far in the first minute, a foul each way, and now John Strong will try to complete the three-point play. He does not, and the rebound is controlled by Bishop Carney. Aguilar bringing the ball up the floor. Taylor guarding him. Now Jahan Wilson will bring it out a little bit to Ja Reeves. Now Wilson, one more time to Gentile. He makes a save on a pass that was a little bit long. To Aguilar. Aguilar on the far side. Reeves one more time. And now it's Gentile. And it's stolen by Niagara Falls. Here goes Taylor. He'll lay it up, and it won't go. Partially blocked 
by Aguilar, and Kearney comes back with the ball. Wilson, near side to Reeves. Reeves spins to Gentile. He'll drive down the lane, no good. He tried to squeeze between two defenders, but he did draw the foul. It went between Estelle and John Strong, and there's a foul on one of them, and he'll be at the free throw line shooting two. The foul on Ephraim Strong. Dude, the only thing I can say is, is it this pace is what's affecting the, uh, the free throws? Just tired, you know what I mean? Because we're seeing a lot of them hit the front of the rim. You just wonder if it's just tired legs and that's it. Well, Gentile had no problem with that one, trying to make us look bad. And Gentile will try to make this a two-point game if he can sink this free throw. And we have a two-point game as Gentile makes the free throw. Gale inbounds it to John Strong. No full-court pressure that time. Strong cross-court pass to Estelle. Looks like Carney's gone into a somewhat of a 2-3 zone here. See how long that lasts. Gale, far side. Now it comes back to John Strong. And he'll hand it off to Estelle. 10 seconds on the shot clock, near side. Back to Estelle. And here's Ephraim Strong. Estelle, strong for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound taken down by Agrulera. He's, in, he's into the front court quickly. Back to Gentile, to Reeves, near side to Jahan Wilson. Bounce pass to Reeves for three. Off the iron, no good. No foul called over the back that time on Capers. And Ephraim Strong brings it into the front court for Niagara Falls. Estelle, Gale, back to Estelle. Now on the near side, Ephraim Strong, spinning. And he passes it back to Gale, who makes a nice save. The three-pointer, no good. And Taylor comes down with that rebound. And they'll get it to Estelle, and he'll drive down the lane. Running one-hander is around and out. He gets his own rebound, battles underneath, goes up, draws the foul. He did one of my favorite things that time, Tom. Go straight up. Don't bother. You know, a lot of guys, especially big guys, want, to, want that extra dribble. That time, it looked like he went right up and drew the foul. And he's not one of the big guys either, right? He really was in with arms up above them. Did a great job of actually getting the offensive rebound first and then doing exactly what you said, go back right up into the hands. Estelle's first free throw is good. Russell Ellis coming back into the game for Carney. Ja Reeves goes out. Niagara Falls by three. Here in the final game of the annual Cataract Classic. Estelle, second free throw is also good. So Niagara Falls free throw shooting much better early in the second half into the front court, Capers. And his shot is blocked, and they're gonna say a jump ball. Nice block there by Ephraim Strong. The ball will stay with Carney, but it's a beautiful block, no foul there. Excuse me, it'll be with Niagara Falls ball. This is Estelle. Wilson guarding him. Wilson with the dribble, gets a pick from Taylor, still dribbling. John Strong was wide open, calling for the ball. Now he gets it. Now into the corner. Ephraim Strong with his pass goes off a leg. It'll go off a Niagara Falls leg, and it will be Bishop Kearney ball as Maddox Volpe comes back into the game. Jahan Wilson goes out. A four-point game. Oh, they got a, might have gotten away with a bump there. Ellis, as Niagara Falls goes back to the full court press, and they get the turnover, Ephraim Strong, into the corner to Estelle, and he has the ball knocked away, but Strong gets the ball back, fortunately for the Falls, and now we get a whistle, and the Carney coach, that's a, and the Carney coaches were screaming three seconds, and I think that's the call they got as well, too. I agree, Stu, that's exactly what it was. So once again, Niagara Falls goes back to that full court pressure. Almost taken away. Gentile on the front court to Maddox Volpe. Puts it up. No good. Rebound knocked away. Aguilar gets it. He'll put up the three. Around and out. Rebound taken down by 
Darian Gilmore for Niagara Falls. John Strong into the front court. Sends it into the corner. And now it comes up Ephraim Strong for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound taken down by the Falls. Bat push shot is no good. And Carney comes down with the rebound. It's Gentile. So the Falls has missed a couple of chances here. And Carney's come away with the rebounds. Gentile into the corner. The three from Alejandro is no good. The rebound up, no good by Capers. And finally, Niagara Falls gets the ball ahead to Ephraim Strong. Back to Estelle for three. Good! And Niagara Falls drains the three-pointer to open a seven-point lead at 32-25. On the far side, Gentile for the Kings. Now it's Russell Ellis. Ellis to Gentile. It's a pick from Maddox Volpe. Hands it off to Capers. Now on the near side, it's Ellis. Ellis sends it back to Gentile for three. Good. So the teams trade three pointers, 32 28. And here's Estelle right back into the front court for Niagara Falls. Three pointer. Good by Ephraim Strong. So three straight threes. Carlos Bradbury urging his team on. 35-28. The Wolverines into the front court comes Carney. Driving the running one-hander is a round and out by Russell Ellis. We get a whistle and a foul. Let's we'll see which way that one's going to go. It's going to go against Bishop Carney. Gale set the check back in if they'll let him check in. Looks like Darian Gilmore is coming out for No, it's not going to be him. But Gale goes back into the game, and Ephraim Strong will get a break. And I'll tell you, right now he's a hot shooter, right? So uh, coach is looking for something more out there on the floor right now. Niagara Falls with the ball and the lead. We're coming up on the two-minute mark here in the second quarter. Estelle almost turned it over. Gets it to Gale into the corner. Double teamed in the corner, and we get a whistle and a timeout taken by Niagara Falls. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. We'll take a timeout to 154 to play third quarter. 35-28 Niagara Falls. You're watching high school basketball on Western New York Athletics. Team West Her. Together for the holidays. Open them up, boys. Mercedes? BMW. We thought the limit was... 25 bucks. This one's mine, right? Seriously? Club covers? It's supposed to be all of us. They're handmade. And the best gift ever. I love it. Go oh, Team West Her. One minute and 54 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Niagara Falls leading Bishop Kearney out of Section 5 Rochester, 35 to 28. I think we all enjoy these Section 5, Section 6 matchups during the regular season. Obviously, they happen in the Far West Regionals. And who knows, these two teams, maybe they'll collide in the Far West Regionals. That's the same with Victor, who Niagara Falls played last night. You know, another opportunity there. So now Niagara Falls, the three-pointer off the iron, no good. Battle for the rebound, won by Bishop Carney. Ellis into the front court. Taylor will come out and guard him. He'll put some pressure on him. He got a whistle and a foul, and that's a foul on Taylor. And each team with three fouls here in the third quarter. That makes sense. Third quarter, three and three for the uh -huh. Fowls. And Sue, remember, last year, Victor beat Niagara Falls in the Far West Regionals last year. So Taylor goes out for Niagara Falls. Aguilar will inbound for Kearney to Gentile. Gentile to Maddox Volpe. He puts it on the floor. It's knocked out of his hands, taken away. Gale gets it nicely to John Strong, despite some good Kearney defense. Ephraim Strong. Lays it up and in. Nicely done by Ephraim Strong. And it's 37-28 as Ja Reeves gets set to check back in for Kearney. Ellis brings the, oh, it's almost stolen by John Strong, but he got it back. 
into the front court, knocked out of his hands. Long pass, oh, saved by Taylor, laid up and in by Strong. And this time at the end of the quarter, it's Niagara Falls making some ha things happen with the defense. An 11 point lead, and stolen again, taken away by Estelle, and he'll lay it up and in, and it's 41 to 28. And now Bishop Carney takes a timeout. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Well, frantic action there, Tom, it just, just before halftime. It is how the half ended for Bishop Carney. Right now it's the same thing happening for Niagara Falls, and now got to that lead where we felt it should have been kind of earlier in this game. So Niagara Falls has opened up a 12-point lead here. 13-point lead, excuse me. Math yeah, we we don't like Stu doing math. Yeah. Stu does it. We don't allow him to do math. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a 13-point lead with just under 50 seconds to go. Strong, strong, and Estelle right, right there have been right now the biggest players that have helped this run happen and really have been pivotal in getting them back up to this lead where they are right now. I want to remind everyone that... If and when Niagara Falls wins, Tom will have the Western New York Immediate Care Player of the Game, and we'll do post-game interviews that you will see on the Western New York Athletics webpage. So now, just under 50 seconds to play here in the third quarter. We'll see how this unfolds. The Niagara Falls pressure has at times given Bishop Carney fits and especially in the last, what, minute or so. This is going to give anybody fits, right? <laughs> I mean, it is just nonstop all game long. I, I can't wait to hear what this practice sounds like. <laughs> it's going to be one of the first questions we got to ask Coach Bradbury. We got a whistle, and we have another foul. Well, that's a foul on the falls. That's on Trey Gale. That's his third personal foul and the fourth team foul. Inbounded to Ellis. Ellis deep in the backcourt. John Strong guarding him. Cut off by Ephraim Strong. His pass gets to Gentile. He's got a path to the basket. He'll put it up and in. Nicely done by Colin Gentile. Make it 41 to 30. The lead is down to 11. Really did a good job of getting to the basket on that one, especially with Estelle standing there waiting for him. Now Strong puts it on the floor, sends it to the corner to Taylor, now Gale. Now Estelle, 20 seconds to go. Looks like the shot clock is even with the game clock. Into the corner, comes back to Estelle. Final 10 seconds of the third quarter, ticking away. Estelle. Ephraim Strong for three, off the iron, no good. Taylor the rebound, puts it up, around and out. Oh, a tough break there for Niagara Falls. Good break for Bishop Carney. And that will bring the third quarter to a close. The third quarter has been brought to you by West Kerr, New York. Niagara Falls leads this one 41 to 30 after three. You're watching high school basketball on Western New York Athletics. Team West Her, together for the holidays. Open them up, boys. Mercedes? BMW. We thought the limit was 25 bucks. This one's mine, right? Seriously? Club covers? It's supposed to be all of us. They're handmade. And the best gift ever. I love it. Go oh, Team West Her. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. The fourth quarter is brought to you by West Kerr, New York. Niagara Falls with an 11 point lead, 41 to 30. Tom, you and I have seen a lot of leads disappear, including in this very game, a huge Niagara Falls lead was whittled down to two and then quickly rebuilt to 11. In, in literally, want to say the last last minute, right? Is really was the last minute of the quarter, 
you can see that just that defense and that full court press really just caused havoc out there. Gentile, or uh, Aguilar will inbound on the far side to Gentile. And he'll get it back to Ellis. Near side to Reeves. Reeves drives, puts it up, no good. Taylor comes down with the rebound. He had good body position and came down with the rebound. Now into the corner. Now John Strong kicks it out to Estelle for three. No good off the iron. Rebound hauled down. And it's Ephraim Strong into the corner. The three, again, no good. Rebound John Strong. Strong to Taylor off his hand. Stolen by Bishop Carney. Reeves ahead to Capers. And that's knocked out of bounds. So it'll be Niagara Falls ball as both teams, now Gale comes back in for Niagara Falls, Taylor goes out. Both teams having a little trouble handling the ball there. And we'll get Reeves in the front court and he from Strong comes back to get the ball and he'll send it cross court to Estelle, now John Strong. Into the front court. Armstrong driving, stops into the corner. Ephraim Strong has it knocked out of his hands, but there's a foul called against Bishop Carney. Colin Gentile is charged with the foul. Exactly seven minutes remaining in regulation. First foul of the quarter for either team. So Niagara Falls will inbound. And they better inbound it fast. And I think five second violation is called. Good defense by Bishop Carney. So it's a turnover. And now Aguilar goes back to inbound it with Trey Gale guarding the inbounder. He gets it to Reeves. And Reeves will bring it up the floor. Reeves keeps the dribble. Sends it to the far side to Ellis. Ellis drives, kicks it back out, but it goes right to Ephraim Strong. He's ahead of the pack. He'll lay it up, and he missed the layup. Reground Aguilar for Bishop Carney into the corner for Reeves, who takes a three off the iron. No good. Rebound taken by Estelle. Ahead to Ephraim Strong one more time, and is knocked out of his hands by Ja Reeves coming back. Back and forth they go, and not a point scored. Yeah, Coach Bradbury didn't like those last two possessions down the floor, no doubt. Actually went off the hands of the Niagara Falls player. Yeah, it Carney actually, ball. it looks like it slipped right out of his hands is what it looked like, actually. Now Reeves being carted by, a, by Estelle. He'll stop and pop, and, and that shot's no good. John Strong comes down with a strong rebound, and he will kick it into the corner to Estelle. He'll take a short jump shot, no good. And that's going to be a foul on Niagara Falls, and the ball will go to Bishop Carney. Yeah, that was over the back right there, definitely as he was trying to be aggressive to go after that rebound. We've had two points scored in the first two minutes here of the fourth quarter, and Niagara Falls will take a timeout. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. 41-30, Niagara Falls with six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. You're watching Boys High School Basketball, a Section 5 and Section 6 matchup on Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Well, six minutes exactly showing on the clock here in the fourth quarter. I want to remind you today that the replays you've seen are brought to you by Logistics Plus of Western New York. The fourth quarter once again being brought to you by West Her New York. And after the game, Tom will have his Western New York Media Care player of the game look for the interviews, assuming Niagara Falls wins this game on the Western New York Athletics webpage. 
So we've had a lot of back and forth here in the fourth quarter and not a lot of points. And now Niagara Falls is going to go back to the full court press. They'll inbound it to Reeves and Niagara Falls will drop back. So they quickly got out of that press. Near side to Reeves. And he'll stop the dribble and bounce pass it to Gentile. With Ephraim Strong guarding him. He'll get a pick from Aguilar. Gentile puts it on the floor, kicks it to the corner. Ja Reeves for three off the iron, no good. John Strong has the ball ripped out of his hands. And then the pass goes off the hands of Aguilar. So a tough break for Bishop Carney there after some good work along the uh, boards. And we're going to see the, the full court press here the other way by Bishop Carney. They'll inbound it underneath to John Strong with Ellis guarding him. And Ellis trying to get prevent Strong from getting it across the timeline. Strong is now into the front court. Still has the dribble, but a nice job dribbling. Gets a pick from Taylor. And he's still got the dribble. Send it into the corner. And coming out of there is Ephraim Strong. Now on the far side to Trey Gale. Back to Estelle and he'll, uh, to uh, Strong, and he'll put up a shot. That was John Strong. He scores, makes it 43 to 30. 13 point lead. Into the front court, Gentile into the corner. And a traveling is called on Jahan Wilson, so it'll be Niagara Falls ball. And we're going to see some full court pressure. I imagine we're going to see a lot of that throughout the rest of this game as. Carney tries to cut into this lead. And, and, and I would think it's probably only going to be one way at this point, right? Because really, Carney's the one who's got to cut these points down, right? And try to cut this lead down somehow. Inbounded to Estelle on the far side. And he's cut off, but manages to get it into the front court to John Strong. And Strong puts it on the floor into the corner. And, Eve, and uh, Gale's shot is no good. Carney gets the rebound. It's Gentile into the front court. And that shot, wow. <laughs> he almost got bent over backwards, did Jahan Wilson. Good thing he's flexible. He could have been hurt. That was, that was literally almost a backbreaker. And a foul is called against Niagara Falls. And that will put Jahan Wilson at the free throw line, shooting two. Stu, there's not one shot one pass that is not aggressively gone after, right? It is made to say this is the hardest game probably either of these teams really have seen when you're just talking about how relentless both teams are in there. Perfect description. First free throw is no good by Wilson. Bishop Carney trying to cut into that 13 point lead. The clock now becoming a factor. Second free throw is good. And Bishop Carney takes a timeout. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. We'll take a timeout to 43-31. Niagara Falls leads Bishop Carney. You're watching high school basketball on Western New York Athletics. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tent goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. Four minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Niagara Falls with a 12-point lead. And, and Stu, before we go, let's give the band a little yeah. bit of credit, right? I mean, this is one of the top bands in Western New York, and I know you guys have been hearing it all night long. They have just been incredible here tonight. Great part of the atmosphere here at Niagara Falls. And trapped in the backcourt is Estelle, and he will call timeout. So that's a good, good result for... Bishop Carney, but nobody stayed back time to help out Nick Estelle. Yeah, and Estelle was trying to communicate. Did you see him trying to talk to his players right there? Do we have a replay? No. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. 43-31 Niagara Falls. We'll keep it right here. See how these final four minutes and 26 seconds roll uh, play out. Last night, Niagara Falls beat Victor in overtime. 
And this is the last game of the annual Cataract Classic. It's been a long time tradition here at Niagara Falls, this Cataract Classic, and Western New York Athletics is happy to be able to bring you a game from Niagara Falls. Yeah, we saw two games earlier. We had a great game with Will North and Depew. Within the last 10 seconds, Ken West takes the lead. Six seconds left, Will North takes the ball down. Misses the shot, but the putback gets put at the buzzer, and then boom, that uh, Will North wins that one. We watched a great game in front of us with Depew and Niagara Wheatfield. Niagara Wheatfield won that one over Depew. Ephraim Strong will inbound, and it looks like he's got some help now. Gets it to John Strong. He's double teamed. Gets it back to his brother, Ephraim, into the front court. Nice passing there. Taylor has the shot go up, but he's fouled. It wouldn't fall, and he'll go to the free throw line. So. Everything went right on that time of breaking the press for the falls, except the ball wouldn't fall into the hole. Listen, if you don't think Niagara Falls knows how to break a press, you're crazy. <laughs> That's what they practice against each other all, all yes. you know what I mean, all summer, you know, all preseason, all that stuff. Taylor misses the free throw. The, the biggest negative I think that you're going to see Coach Bradbury say is it's free throws. Like, we've got to make those easy shots. We don't know what they are in the second half. That free throw is good in the first half. Niagara Falls, six for 17 from the free throw line. I imagine there'll be a few extra free throw shots <laughs> taken in practice. Now Reeves to Gentile. Near side to Ellis, and now the pass off the hands of Wilson comes back to Gentile. He'll take a three around and out. Taylor gets the rebound, knocked away, gets it back, and hangs on to the ball. Gets it to John Strong, ahead to Ephraim Strong. He'll put it up, no good. Rebound brought down by Taylor, put up and in, and he draws the foul. Big bucket there by Michael Taylor. And Niagara Falls adds to the lead. It's now 15 at 46-31. And that'll be Taylor at the free throw line. And the free throw is no good. Aguilar comes down with the rebound for Bishop Carney. Long cross court pass to Wilson. Jahal Wilson drives toward the bucket, lays it up and in. Nicely done. That was Russell Ellis, excuse me. Well done by Ellis. Now Niagara Falls trying to bring it into the front court. They get it to Ephraim Strong. Gentile hassling him. Trying to steal the ball. They double team him. They tie him up. And the ball is a jump ball. Which way is the arrow pointing? And it looks like the ball will stay with Niagara Falls, but some really good defense there. Jaden Capers goes back into the game for Bishop Carney. Good work there by Carney, but Niagara Falls will maintain possession. John Strong. Looking for help, gets it to a teammate in the corner. This is Nick Estelle. Nick will drive the baseline. He's cut off, puts up a shot, no good. And coming down with the rebound, but Darian Gilmore is called for a travel as he hits the deck and it'll be Carney Ball. So a tough break there for the Falls and for Gilmore, who made a great effort to haul down that rebound. Now it looks like Niagara Falls is going to put some of that full court pressure on. We'll see how intense they keep it. They'll allow them to bring it into the front court. Wilson, Gentile, back to Wilson. He'll drive down the lane. Send it to Ellis for three. No good. Battle for the loose ball. Won by Niagara Falls. Estelle cut off. Glad he caught that. Darian Gilmore, the ball was headed right at our heads. I was just going to say, I thought that was hitting us. <laughs> And now Carney with the steal. Up ahead to Reeves. And the layup is no good by it Wilson, but there's a foul called. And there will be free throws taken by Bishop Carney. Ephraim Strong will draw the foul, and commit the foul rather, and Jahan Wilson will go to the free throw line. Niagara Falls by 13, 234 to play here in the fourth quarter. First free throw is good. I want to remind everybody the fourth quarter is being brought to you by West Her, New York. As Wilson gets set to take his second free throw. 
And Coach Good checking to see how many timeouts he's got. So I'm guessing we may get a timeout after this free throw if he makes it. The free throw is good. And we get a timeout taken by Bishop Kearney. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. And we'll take our final break. Niagara Falls 46, Bishop Kearney 35. You're watching high school basketball on Western New York Athletics. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means getting people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Two minutes, 34 seconds showing on the clock here in the fourth quarter, 46-35. Niagara Falls by 11. Well, we saw a lead disappear very quickly at the end of the first half. So Bishop Carney will be trying to do that same thing again. The only difference, I think it's a little bit more of a lead. If you remember, it was in single digits when that happened. It was eight, I think, when that started. So now Bishop Kearney will put full court pressure on the Wolverines. Estelle looks to inbound, gets it to Strong, gets it right back. And he'll get it into the front court to Ephraim Strong. Kearney wanted a traveling. Strong to Estelle, and the Niagara Falls will pull it out here and use some clock. Estelle, far side to Ephraim Strong. Into the corner, now it'll come right back to Ephraim Strong. 15 showing on the shot clock. Estelle with the ball. Puts it on the floor into the corner. And he'll get the pass back. Will Estelle from John Strong. We got a whistle and a foul on Bishop Carney. Jaden Capers commits the foul. And boy, you heard the, you heard the Bishop Carney bench with a loud no when that foul was called. Now Gale comes in for Niagara Falls. And Taylor comes out. A fresh shot caught for Niagara Falls. Which is not good for Bishop Kearney with that fresh shot clock. They'll inbound it. He from Strong to John Strong. And his pass is stolen. And here comes Kearney. And we get an over and back call against Bishop Kearney. Repompted. Carry, yeah, access. carry. Well, and a turnover at the worst possible time for Bishop Kearney as they try to mount a comeback. Or under two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Bit of a hill for the Kings to climb. And now Ephraim Strong inbounds it to John Strong and he'll get the ball right back. Ephraim will. Ephraim cross court packs to Estelle. Estelle down low to John Strong. And they didn't call a foul there that Kearney actually wanted to see it. Estelle. Strong, 15 on the shot clock, dump it into the corner to Gale, and he'll pass it back and put up, no good. Rebound couldn't quite be grabbed by Gilmore. Here comes Carney's Gentile into the front court. He'll put it up and in. And that time the Niagara Falls players did not want to foul, so he was allowed to split the defense. John Strong, far side, almost stolen. Pass gets to Ephraim Strong, long pass. Now Ephraim gets it again. He thought about shooting it. Now it's John Strong. John Strong and his pass for Estelle. Somehow Niagara Falls saved that, and then we get a whistle. Maybe he didn't really save it. It just looked like he did. Yeah, I mean, he stepped out of bounds is where it was. Out of bounds. Right. We were kind of blocked by that, but it looks like the step went out of bounds. You know, Stu, it's going to be very interesting if there's a team in Western New York that's going to be able to stay with the speed of this Niagara Falls team and this relentless defense that you see. Three-pointer no good by Carney. Ellis gets the rebound. His three is blocked. Reeves gets it. Puts up a short jump shot that won't go. Niagara Falls. Gilmore double-teamed underneath, and he tries to throw the ball off the Carney player, and it actually worked. Nice play. No, no, no. He got pushed to call oh, it a pushed. foul. Another foul on Bishop Carney. And, and that's number five, so it should be shooting. 
That's on Gentile, his third, and you're right, we're gonna have some free throws here. Darian Gilmore, the 6'4 senior at the free throw line for the Falls, under 43 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Niagara Falls by nine, as Tom mentioned, now they are in the bonus. And suddenly these free throws take on bigger importance as he misses that one. You know, 42 seconds is plenty of time for any kind of lead to dis disappear, including a nine-point lead. You and I have seen that happen, too. Yeah, being the Nick fan, I've seen that a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Here's Gentile for Carney, and Bishop Carney will quickly take a timeout. So now if you're the coach, Tom, and you're on the Carney side, this timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. So my question is, now the three-point shot revolutionized this game. Now at this point, it seems like Carney needs a three and fast. I mean, the, t the time for them to go for two is over, I think. Yeah, it really is, um, because just the 40 seconds. And you know you're going to get a full-court press thrown at you either way right here. So I really believe you're right. You've got to set up for a three-point play right here. And in the perfect world for Carney, Niagara Falls gets careless and fouls. They get a chance at a four-point yeah. play and less time off the clock. And, and I'm not I don't, I'm not banking on that, no. right? You don't want to bank on a four-point play, but you want to get this down at least to six points and then kind of figure out where you're going to go from there because you know it's going to go. It would go three, full-court press, got to get a steal. But you're also going to be thinking about fouling real quick because you've also seen that Niagara Falls hasn't really made their free throws today. So will you get the opportunity? to still get the ball back because of missed free throws. Reeves inbounding, gets it to Gentile. Back to Reeves. On the dribble to Ellis. Near side to Gentile for three. Good! And a timeout taken by Carney after the Gentile three to cut it to seven. Well, they executed that pretty well. This timeout is brought to you by the U.S. Army. So there you go, got your three. Now you know they're gonna go into a full court press. You're gonna have to foul very quickly in this. And you can see that they'll go to the run, to the line. Niagara Falls has to make their free throws, period. But I'm gonna but but if I'm coach, I'm putting them at the line. I wanna put them at the line very quickly. And of course the reason for putting them at the line, no time goes off that clock. Absolutely. And and and, and so far. That's the one point of Niagara Falls game that they've struggled with tonight. So you've got to see if you can be a team that can capitalize off that. Now Niagara Falls just has to go down, right? Hit those, and this game's over if you hit those. Right, and, and in fact, it would have been over long ago had they hit their free throws throughout the game. Six for 17 in the first half. They left 11 points on the floor. So... Nick Estelle will inbound for Niagara Falls, and you will see tremendous full court pressure here. And Estelle will get the ball back to Ephraim Strong, and there's the foul. Gentile will follow him. I foul him. I believe that is the fourth on Gentile. A little bit, about four seconds ticked off the clock. Michael Taylor getting set to check back in for Niagara Falls. And I won't even be surprised you see Niagara Falls go defense for offense, right? To be able to get all their shooters out there that can make their free throws. So Ephraim Strong at the free throw line. The first one is good. Now they will allow the substitution. Taylor into the game. Second free throw. Around and out, Carney gets the rebound. It's Gentile who just hit that three into the front court. And Aguilar, his three is no good. John Strong gets the rebound and he's immediately hammered. And he'll go to the free throw line. So Niagara. And, and, and exactly what you had to do, right? This is, this is textbook of what you'd expect right now at the end of this game. So John Strong at the free throw line. John and older brother Ephraim have both had strong games for the Falls. Both have played very well. 
And a couple more free throws in this game. Show, we missed the first one. And a couple more free throws in this game will be put on ice for the Wolverines. Maybe in Western New York I should never say that about a game because you just never know. <laughs> on ice. Here comes Carney into the front court. Looking to get a three off. Instead, they'll take a two that's no good. Reeves for the rebound. Gentile for the rebound. Gentile's shot is blocked. He hits the deck. He's fouled. And he will go to the free throw line with just over six seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Well, Gentile's had quite a day for Bishop Carney. And still, as silly as this sounds, do you have him, you know, try to make the first one and then potentially miss the second one? Why not? Because you need multiple. It, this isn't a one possession game, right? So you want to try to do to make it a second possession. I think you're right. So Gentile. And he missed the first free throw, which I'm sure he didn't want to do. Gale comes back into the game. This is that offense defense thing we were talking about, right? To get shooters out there on the floor. We've already seen Gale's a shooter. And I'm expecting the miss here to be intentional. So Gentile takes a dribble. No good, and the ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Bishop Kearney. So that's a positive intentional if you're, you know, if you're Bishop Kearney right there. So Aguilar will inbound. I would imagine they'll be looking for Gentile to take this here, 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 Here's that offense, yeah. defense again that we're talking about. Yeah, Taylor comes in, and Gilmar... Gilmore goes out. Aguilar to inbound. Everybody in motion. On the far side, Reeves, the three off the iron, no good. Battle for the rebound as the buzzer sounds to bring the game to a close and Niagara Falls wins it by a score of 48 to 40. A hard fought game. I want to remind everybody the fourth quarter was brought to you by West Hern, New York. All the timeouts today brought to you by the U.S. Army and replays brought to you by Logistics Plus of Western New York. And stay tuned, or stay oh, on. We're going to announce it right here. Ah, all right, so Tom, who is the do. Western New York Media Care Player of the Game? So I think we got three players of the game right here. No doubt it's John Strong, it's Ephraim Strong, and it's Nick Estella, my players of the game right here. They were absolutely pivotal, and you'll get a chance to hear post-game interviews with them later on. So look on the Western New York Athletics page for the immediate care player of the game. Want to thank everybody for watching. Want to thank our photographer, Russ Battaglia, our producer, Heidi Gunther, and the greatest color man of the ball, Tom Prince. My name is Stu Boyer. Once again, the final score, Niagara Falls 48, Bishop Kearney 40. Thank most of all to you for watching. Have a good night, everybody.